How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, we are gonna be dealing with something that I've kind of never actually dealt with before. Now today, what we're dealing with is a very common issue for aquariums like mine. So aquariums with very low flow through them, so very low flow of water through like the plants and like kind of stuff. Also very low CO2. So as you guys can probably tell by the channel's name, I really do like to keep fish simple. Now as a result of the way I keep fish compared to a lot of other people, I deal with a bunch of different problems to those other people because when we have aquariums, we deal with problems regardless. There's no way to keep fish exactly the way we want to, but there are ways to make this hobby a little bit easier and just to make it like a little bit more enjoyable through those means. So today we're gonna be dealing with staghorn algae and some black beard algae, but mainly the staghorn algae. I've got quite a lot of that stuff in this bottom aquarium, as you can see down here. Now this stuff is very disgusting looking. It doesn't really look like algae. It looks more like a bacteria, kind of like hairy thing. A lot of people think that this is like black beard algae because of the color of it and stuff like that, and because it kind of like is hairy. So this stuff is definitely not black beard algae. The black beard algae is more of like a like fuzzy kind of thing. It sticks to rocks and driftwood and all that kind of stuff. And they both result in aquariums from having low CO2 and low flow. So in all my aquariums, I keep sponge filters now. Now, if you guys want to know why I keep sponge filters, there's going to be a video up here that you guys can go and watch. And I'll completely explain all the reasons why I keep them. Sponge filters obviously are known not to have a lot of power, especially when I run them off of really, really low air pumps that like don't create a lot of noise and they don't have like a lot of force on them. So there's not a lot of water getting pushed around my aquarium. And both of these kinds of algae are very slow growing and they also arise because of these issues. So low CO2 and low movement in the water. So today, I'm not gonna try and adjust the movement of the water. I don't think that that's gonna be necessary because these both grow so slow, so they don't really ever bother me. And I've never been one to really care about algae now. I kind of treat algae as like a given now. It's pretty much bound to happen. It's just whether you want to react to it. And today, my algae has gotten way over the top. So today, we're going to be trying to mitigate this as much as we can now. To make this as easy as possible, I'm really not too sure how this is going to work. So I've done a lot of research and I've come to the conclusion that this is going to be the best thing for me to use. So you don't have to use, obviously, this kind of brand. I'm not sponsored by anyone. This is just what I'm going to try and use. So I'm going to use some Flourish Excel by Seachem. And basically what this is gonna do is this is bioavailable carbon. Pretty much gonna try and spray this on all the affected areas in the aquarium with this stuff. And I'm pretty much gonna leave it for a couple of weeks and see what happens. So I'm gonna follow all the instructions on this like I was just dosing the aquarium with this chemical to make the plants grow. And hopefully this works. So this should be able to combat both the black beard algae and the staghorn algae, but I'm obviously not too sure. It is really frustrating on YouTube watching other people's videos and stuff like that where like you kind of don't ever come to a real conclusion. So hopefully today, this video is gonna cover everything you need to know on how to actually deal with this stuff. Without any further ado, let's go have a look at the aquarium. Here are like all the tanks in the room. Now, most of the planted aquariums are dealing with this problem. Obviously these two aquariums here don't have any like plants and stuff like that, so it's not gonna really matter too much with them, but it's these two affected aquariums. So the main one down here is this aquarium. So this is the aquarium with all the staghorn algae in it. So this is my like Enlaguppy aquarium. And this aquarium literally has just like a carpet of these micro swords down here. And then it also has all of these Java ferns up the back. So there's all these different kinds. But as you can see, there is just dense, dense populations of this stuff just in the aquarium, creating a mess. So basically, as you can see, this aquarium down here, it's in very due need of a trim. So I'm gonna give it a trim today. I'm gonna try and make it look as like good and neat as possible. And then I'm gonna give it a quick spray. But I also thought while we're at it, we'd also try and tackle some of this black beard algae here. So this is formed on my Mopani driftwood just over the past five months of being in this aquarium. So you can see how slow growing this stuff is. We're only gonna have to deal with this every now and then because this stuff takes quite a long time to grow so it's not like the green water algae that just goes off and uh, explodes but if you guys have that issue you can check out my video up here and this will completely explain everything you need to know on how to get rid of green water in your aquarium So I've just done some basic trimming on some of the plants in this aquarium just to kind of like tie it up and make sure that we know like exactly where we're gonna target it so what I'm gonna do so I'm just gonna follow the instructions and According to my maths, I have to use 27.5 mils of this. So I'm gonna do that, but I'm also gonna try and target the areas using small pipettes and try and best target all of the uh, affected spots just by giving a big squirt of the uh, chemicals and we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna go do that now. Pretty much squirt the stuff around everywhere in here. There's another nice little juicy spot back here. That one a good spray. Okay. 
and then we're basically just going to cover this entire spot down here in this. Just give it a really, really good spray with it. Okay, now both of the aquariums have just been dosed. Now, obviously there's not going to be any sudden like changes they're both gonna obviously still be like covered in algae but the method is gonna be that every couple of days so not every day but every couple of days I'm gonna come back and dose both of the aquariums until this stuff starts to die and then I'll start ripping it out so whether this works or not I'm honestly not entirely sure I'm really really crossing my fingers that it does work because then it's gonna be a really easy fix for all of you guys to do but if it doesn't work I'm sure that the plants won't mind having a bit of extra Excel it'll be really interesting to see how the plants react to that because None of these plants in here have ever had fertilizers in the aquarium. So we'll see how this goes in a couple of weeks time, which I reckon it'll take quite a long time for this stuff to die because it takes so long for it to grow. And yeah, it'll be really interesting to see this. Okay, so it's been two weeks now and here are our two test subjects. One bottle of Seachem Excel later. So I haven't decided to go out and buy another bottle because really, to me, this doesn't seem to be a big issue. I was kind of running this as a big test experiment to see whether I could actually eradicate blackbeard algae and some of that static one algae as well. Okay, so here are the pieces of driftwood in the top aquarium with the angelfish in it that were affected by blackbeard algae. Now, as you can see, there is significantly less blackbeard algae present on these logs. Now, if you look up to the top here, there's gonna be quite a lot of that blackbeard algae still starting to form. And the reason it worked on this log and not on the other pieces of wood in the aquarium is because at the start of the video, you would have seen me squeezing the chemicals straight onto these pieces of driftwood. Now that absolutely killed it and the fish have been eating it and the bristlenose plecos and all that kind of stuff here have been eating the dead blackbeard algae and it killed it completely. All the parts that weren't directly sprayed, like as you can see up here, weren't really affected. Now it's only been about two weeks, so I don't know if these are gonna continue to further die, like they just take a little bit more time. I'm guessing they actually will because these have started to become more discolored in the past couple of days. So I'm guessing that with a bit more time, these will eventually start to go away and we'll have no blackbeard algae in the tank. Now, my method for this aquarium up here, besides initially spraying those pieces of driftwood down there with the chemicals, was just to add this every time I did a water change, which was every three days so I just did that until I ran out of chemicals to use and these are the results you'll get so definitely does work it's a really really good method for getting rid of some of that blackbeard algae now this aquarium up here wasn't really contaminated with any static one algae because this aquarium was getting a bit more movement than the other aquarium so if we come down to here you can see a significant difference in the quality of the plants and the amount of algae that's present in this aquarium. So if you wanna have a look through here, you can see none of that disgusting staghorn algae is present anymore. And we have a significantly less amount of some of that blackbeard algae. There's still little clusters of it throughout this big java fern jungle. There's definitely a lot less algae present in this fish tank. So the method for this aquarium was the exact same as the one above. Every three days this was getting a water change and I was adding chemicals just to the water. So the only time I sprayed specific parts of the aquarium was when you guys saw me do it on that video. So that was the first time I used chemicals to treat this aquarium. Now I also think that the aquariums have become a lot more greener since we've been adding these chemicals. So it was kind of a win-win situation. We eradicated all of the staghorn algae that didn't need to be spot killed. That was just killed by itself. And we also got a much healthier group of plants. So just by adding more carbon to the aquarium, we seemed to kill off these two very stagnant styles of algae. I hope that you guys can learn something from this because I would have really loved to have known this before I was creating these aquariums because all of my aquariums in this room are very, very low CO2 aquariums and they have very little movement. So I wasn't really willing to boost up the movement, but I was definitely willing to add some chemicals to add a bit more CO2 to the water. So that Excel really did the job. Now, it definitely did a way better job of getting rid of some of that staghorn algae than getting rid of the blackbeard algae. If you guys are trying to get rid of that blackbeard algae, you definitely need to spot treat it. So everywhere in the aquarium that you have some of that stuff, you just need to give it one squirt and it'll literally kill it all. So basically what happens is it starts to become discolored and then the little fish inside of your aquarium will go around and they'll start to nibble at it and eat it. And it's really, really good. So that's pretty much gonna be the video guys. Thank you so much for watching it. I really appreciate it and I hope you guys learned something and got something out of this video because this is a little fun experiment that I love to do. I'm really, really happy with how this turned out and my aquariums look a lot better now that they've got less of that disgusting staghorn and blackbeard algae. So thank you so much for watching this video guys and I'll see you guys in the next one.